Welcome back everyone to part three of my 3D printed Formula One gearbox. Today we're gonna to be focused on getting the gearbox shifting. Here's the electronic setup with the ESP32 in place of the uh, Arduino Nano. Uh, it's, ESP32 has worked out great. There's uh, many, many quirks, um, but I've worked through them over the last couple of weeks. Uh, over here, we just got a couple of DRV 8825s on a proto board, just like I had prior. I've also started working on how I'm going to uh, fit all these electronics into the clutch slave housing. Um, I've come up with this uh, slotted cradle design that's uh, got some modular mounts that I can actually mount the individual components with. Um, as you can see, I've got the electronic speed controller right here. Um, this represents the uh, stepper motor drivers. And then this little cradle over here is for the ESP32. And then I have a little bit of a space right here for the a buck converter. And then if you can see, I've actually integrated the photo sensors down here, and that uh, allows the slotted wheel to actually uh, be able to measure the RPM on the lay shaft. So as you can see, it's a pretty tight fit. I'm gonna initially try to fit this all up with uh, just jumper wire so that I can continue to reconfigure things as I add features or figure out uh, different issues that uh, arise. Um, you know, someday if I have some time, I'll uh, go ahead and create a custom PCB. Okay, so hopefully you can see all this. Um, what I've done is I've just created a simple web app on the uh, ESP32 that uh, kind of hosts an interface so that I can actually uh, control the transmission. Now it is over web, so there is a little bit of a lag, but as you can see, press upshift to the upshift, and of course, downshift to downshift. And it's a lot of fun. I'm actually so excited that I've got this going. For shifts right now, I'm not overlapping the shift barrels at all. Um, this means that the first shift barrel disengages the gear completely before the second uh, shift barrel engages the next gear. Um, without any overlap, the shift takes about six one hundredths of a second, uh, which is essentially instantaneous from a human perception standpoint, but uh, still 10 times slower than the real thing. Uh, my back of the napkin math says it's unlikely that I can shift fast enough uh, to overlap the shift barrels any meaningful amount. So I'm uh, going to wait a little bit and play with that functionality later. I've also added a learn button to the uh, web app and that allows me to actually store the positions of the potentiometers for each gear. There's no good way to perfectly align the pots as you're assembling this. Um, so what you do is you essentially uh, click on the learn button here and then it tells you what gear that it's going to uh, read the pots for. So you just position it manually um, via the shift drums into say neutral in this case, and then you hit store gear position and it'll go on to the next gear. Again, manually move the shift drums into first gear, store the position and so on and so forth until you reach seventh gear. And then it actually will save the values into EEPROM. And actually on the ESP32, it's much better than the Arduino because uh, and rather than putting in the EEPROM, it puts it into flash memory. Uh, so you can reprogram the controller multiple times and not lose the settings on the potentiometer. I've also created a little uh, diagnostic program that runs at startup that can detect whether or not the uh, stepper motors are plugged in backwards or if the potentiometers are miswired. Um, so it just runs right at the start. You can actually see it does a few steps one way and then steps back on that right barrel and then does the same thing to the other barrel. and then steps back the other way. And at the same time, it's checking the pot values to determine if it's uh, moving the right amount and if it's moving in the right direction. Once I get this all back together too, I'm gonna add some code to uh, turn the motor on and off and test that the RPM sensors are working properly so I can make sure that uh, I can diagnose any issues with those as well. I finished printing more of the final parts. And as you can see, the silk PLA looks absolutely awesome, almost like real metal. Um, it's really exciting. I was able to get a 55 turn 540 motor. Um, and with the limited testing that I've been able to do thus far, it looks to be a much better uh, motor and more suited to this gearbox. Um, I can rotate the motor at a much slower speed with the ESC without uh, stalling. It's a lot quieter and it has a lot more uh, low RPM torque with less than half the amperage draw of the 27 turn motor I was using before. Uh, I also changed the drive gears uh, inside that internal drive gear 
uh, to be a helical style, which I think has also helped quiet things down even more. Well, that's it for this video. I'm still continuing to print more parts. Um, you know, I believe if you printed out every part all in one go, um, this transmission takes around 300 hours of printing. Unfortunately, I never seem to get it right on the first try or the second time, um, and sometimes on the third. Uh, but I'll try to pull together some stats for the finale so you can kind of get a feel for how much uh, time is required and the amount of uh, PLA needed as well. Um, I've designed a uh, controller for the gearbox as well. Um, I'm gonna, it's a F1 style steering wheel kind of from the 2013 era. Um, it'll have an ESP32 in it as well. And I'm starting to right now to breadboard it out. I'm kind of in uh, LED hell with all the shift lights and the uh, three different seven segment displays, but uh, I should be able to work through that here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more builds like this, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, hit that like button. Thanks.